In this particular session, we will discuss about the Android boot sequence or the boot process, how Android device starts, what are the background processes that works for the Android boot up. So let's get started. On the left hand side, I have my Android framework you can say and on the right hand side, I have these simple six steps which simply represent your boot process. So let's go with the boot process first, then we will simply compare this with our framework here. So let's go with the steps first. So it all starts with the power button. Whenever you press a power button, a wired signal will simply execute the basic low level firmware code which was stored inside your boot ROM memory, right? Boot ROM memory will then load your bootloader inside the RAM. Then your RAM memory will simply initialize the kernel or you can say execute the kernel and then your kernel will initialize different drivers, load your libraries, start some background process for the system level part and then initialize one more process with the name init. Before this init process up to this kernel part, this was known as your system space. From this init process, we start your user space, which means your user can interact here. This was your user space from this step four or from this init process. Init is the first process for the user space. You can say init is the parent for all the processes that works in the user space, right? Then init will do different other things. The first thing was there was a file in the Android device, you can say with the name Android init.rc which consists of different commands to be executed like to load your file system, what permissions to be mounted, they will be mounted with like read only permission, they will be mounted with read write permissions, this kind of permissions were there and after executing all the commands in init.rc then it will start one more process with the name zygote and zygote is the process which is completely responsible for managing your virtual machines for different applications out there like we you know all the application have their own virtual machines right so zygote will simply manage terminate and again initialize all those virtual machines for different process as per the need part and it does it really effectively other than this zygote will again initialize one more process with the name system server this system server process is completely responsible for your application framework if you just go with this image here will better relate this system server process is completely responsible for managing these application framework managers here like we have notification manager like we have resource location telephony package activity again we have different other managers were there this was your second layer application framework layer your zygote or the vm part works here at layer 3 android runtime part your kernel runs here at the bottom or loads your libraries as well right so your kernel part was at the bottom your VM part is here at the number three and your system server which is responsible for your application framework is here at level two and after that part when all the managers were completely initialized or completely loaded then your device will simply broadcast a message and that message was action boot complete after broadcasting this message, your application will become interactive and then you will start working with your Android device. This was the basic simple boot sequence for your Android device. And that's all from my side in this session. Have a good day and see you in the next session. Stay connected.